Hey everybody, I want to talk today about tuning your violin. Now this video is geared towards beginner students and their parents as well as more advanced students. So the first thing you want to know is that these are the pegs and these are the fine tuners right here. I happen to have four on my tailpiece. Some of you may have none or only one on the E string. So the easiest way is definitely to tune with your fine tuners. Uh, they, you know, as the name implies, they, they tune very accurately. Uh, the pegs, on the other hand, uh, take a bit of skill to use. Uh, the pegs are actually tapered, so you have to push in as you turn. If you don't do that, the peg will just slip. You might hear it just, just slip, and you might notice that your string is just completely loose, and you're like, what do I do? Well, if that happens, what you want to do, uh, for a beginner, you can just kind of set this on your lap and push from the other side and push in here and turn until you get it in tune, or at least close if you have fine tuners. Okay. So first let's talk about what I consider to be the simplest way of tuning and that is using the fine tuners with a reference pitch. Now standard tuning for your A string in North America is 440 hertz or 440 vibrations per second. Uh, I believe in Europe it's a little bit different and during the Baroque era it was, it was a bit lower as well. Uh, so anyways, we'll find a reference pitch. Um, I'll play some at the end of this video. But also, you know, if you just type in YouTube A440, you'll, you'll come up with a video. Uh, and that's what I have right here. Somebody posted a video of, of a proper A. So I'm just gonna use that pitch. I'll detune my violin a little bit. So I have to do some work. So yeah, that's, that's what you call lower. I need to go, nah. so I need to bring the pitch up. Uh, by the way, this is high and this is low, okay, when it comes to music. So I need to go higher to get a higher pitch. Sounds like I'm pretty close. Close, but not quite there. That sounds about right. Okay. Now, you could get a reference pitch for every string. Um, and that would be the absolute simplest way to do it. Um, but, if you can hear a perfect fifth, which I'm going to try to teach you how to do right now, then you only need one reference pitch. So a perfect fifth is considered to be the most pleasing interval to the human ear other than an octave. An octave is from A to A, for example. Almost sounds like the same note. Now a perfect fifth, it's a very open sound. Very, very clear. Now if we listen to a minor second, that is a very, what we call a very dissonant sound. Listen to this. Ooh, and can you even hear that brrrr sound in there? Yeah. You, I, I'm not guaranteeing my piano here is 100% in tune, but you, you really won't hear that uh, with a perfect fifth. It's very, very clear. Okay. So you know the, the, the tune, oh, 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 that's a perfect fifth. So I'm going to try to tune my violin to be a perfect fifth from the E to the A. Alright, so let's detune this violin a little bit. Oops, I just touched my A, I'm going to need to redo that. Is my violin too low or too high? I 
it's too low. So I am going to tighten my A string the same way that you would tighten what you call tighten a screw. You go clockwise to tighten it. And I'm gonna keep doing that until it matches this pitch. That sounds good. All right, so now I'm gonna try to create a perfect fifth between my A and my E. I'm not gonna touch the A anymore, except maybe at the end I might go back and very finely tune each string because as you change the tension from one side of the neck to the other, especially with smaller size student instruments, it can throw other strings out of tune. gonna do the same thing on the D but I'm, I'm gonna uh, be adjusting the lower pitch the O instead of the the E not the E note but the O the E of the O E right okay now that D is too high D, we'll go from the D to the G. Now that G is a bit too high. That is what the violin sounds like when it is in tune. It's pretty easy, right? You, you can very easily and accurately move these fine tuners. That makes it very easy. Now, you may notice if you, if you look you can, if the camera will pick this up. Do you see how my, this is my A tuner here. It's quite a bit lower than the other ones. Now, now that is because it's screwed in more. Can you see that on the camera? Um, anyways, these have a limit stop on them, the, the, the fine tuners. They literally screw down like a screw. And when you get to the bottom, they just don't go any further. It looks like my A is almost at that point. Yep, now it is, it's, it's at that point. So what if my A is too low and I can't tune it higher anymore? I cannot tighten it anymore. Well, that is a circumstance where you're gonna have to learn how to use your pegs. So you know what I'm gonna do right now? This is what I generally do uh, when, when they get down too far. I, I go ahead and back all my fine tuners out just about as far as they can go, okay? Uh, now, if you go too far, and watch what happens. The, the actual tuner will come off in your hand or possibly fall onto the floor. So be careful. Um, yeah. So see that? So that's my tuner. It came all the way off. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put that back in. You have to have it screwed in with most styles of tuners, at least like a, you know, two or three turns, I guess. Otherwise, they're just loose and they'll rattle. So I've got that engaged. I'm gonna loosen all the other tuners now. All right. And by the way, the reason I, I loosen them all, you, you might be thinking, well, what if you need to go looser? Well, generally, over time, you need to continually tighten your strings because over time they stretch and the pitch drops. Uh, the, the times when you'll find that your violin is tuned too high is if there's a, a change in the weather and the wood expands or contracts or something like that. Um, so generally, they are loosening and dropping in pitch. So therefore, moving them all the way out, almost all the way out, will uh, set you up to be able to use them for a long time. All right, the piano is a little bit below proper A440. 
Uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and tune to that because you can probably hear that a bit better than this uh, reference pitch I have. So let's see. So I am, if this was in your lap, you would just take your hand, you take one hand on the violin's neck and push in on the, on the bass side of the violin, the lower string side. Then I am going to loosen the peg a little bit to break the, the, the friction that's holding the peg in place. Better to loosen as you do that than tighten in case your peg is very tight and you just all of a sudden you pushing, pushing all this tension and, phew, and then you, you've tightened it so much that the string breaks, right? So better safe than sorry. And then tune back up. All right, let me get my reference A. And then at that point, we would use the same procedure to tune all the other strings. Um, now, I'm, at this point, I'm, I'm not gonna need another reference pitch. I just use my, my uh, accurate A to uh, tune to all the other strings. By the way, the E, uh, usually with a classical setup, uh, is going to be a lot more sensitive uh, to the uh, the movement of the peg than the other strings because it's primarily or entirely steel or, or metal and the other three strings uh, with a classical setup are going to have uh, well possibly gut if they're uh, very old-fashioned style or they will uh, be it nylon, purlon, some other more modern material uh, wound on the outside with with some metal so uh, 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 a large uh, change here makes a smaller difference than it does on the E. All right, so that's pretty accurate, um, but there's definitely a more accurate and more advanced way to tune your violin, and it's how I generally tune my violin. Um, and that is playing, uh, finding your, your reference A first, or whatever note you may be using, and then um, uh, playing two strings at once, uh, a double stop is what you might call it as a violinist. And uh, then listening for a beating frequency between the two strings and listening for the absence of that beating frequency. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Well, actually I did kind of show you when I played the minor second, which is uh, uh, two keys with no space, either the two, one of the two pairs of white keys with no black key in between them or like a white key and the black key next to it. So you hear that that kind of beating frequency? Well, when your violin is out of tune, you will also have a, a similar sound. Let's see. So do you hear how that cleared up there? Play it again, nice and clear. Okay, so that clears up. So I'm gonna bring it up to A440. I'm gonna use the peg so I don't kinda unnecessarily turn these guys. So now I'm going to bring that E up to be a perfect fifth from the A, and I'm listening for any kind of roughness in the sound, uh, in the space between the, the two notes. You hear that? It's still there now. It's it's not quite so rough or quite so fast. Okay, now the A and the D. See, it's getting a little.
little bit faster there. Now it's slowed down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now it's whoa, 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 whoa. the D and the G. Could you hear that? I hope it comes through. Anyway, that is the way you will see experienced violinists tuning their violin. Anytime you go to the orchestra, you know, you'll know you you'll either see the, the concert master, the first violinist stand up, uh, play an A for the orchestra, and every member of that orchestra will tune their entire instrument off of that A. Um, or you'll see the, the, the oboe player do that. Um, so that is an important thing to learn. You know, it's very easy to learn to tune with a uh, with an electronic tuner. I think I have one on my phone somewhere. Certainly, it take it would take more time for me to tune using that than just a reference pitch. Um, uh, but but what if you're what if you're playing with another instrument that's not easily tunable, such as a piano? I already told you my piano is not in tune with with uh, A440. So what are you going to do? Ask the pianist to tune properly? No, it, the, the piano is fine. It's fine that the piano has dropped. It's in tune with itself. It's relatively in tune. You wouldn't notice, uh, you know, casually playing uh, with with friends in the house that that uh, you know it's uh, out of tune with itself. So that's fine. What if you're playing with an accordion player? Very hard, if not impossible, to tune an accordion. I think they have reeds inside that can be uh, bent by a professional and to, to retune or something like that, but they're not going to retune. You're going to tune to that accordion. I used to be in a band, in a, a kind of a Balkan band with a, a guy who played accordion and his accordion was uh, probably in tune with the European system or something like that and I had to tune to that. So you definitely uh, need to tune not relying on an electronic tuner. Yeah, let me show you how to tune using the perfect fifths by using your pegs if you if you don't have fine tuners down at the bottom or otherwise need to use your pegs. Yeah, so in order to <laughs> to tune the violin using the pegs while you are holding it in playing position, you ha again you have to push in on the peg as you turn it. That can be a little tricky at first. For each peg, I kind of have a different position for my hand. And uh, I think depending on the size of your hand, you're going to have to find your own position. Basically, I try to get the scroll in my hand as much as possible. For the D, where I would, I would start, I'm going to take my, my middle finger right over the end of the peg. I'm also going to kind of cradle uh, the A peg with uh, my ring finger. And I'm going to use my thumb and my uh, my index finger, and I'm gonna I'm actually gonna put the index finger this way, you know, that use the back of the index finger, and uh, I'm gonna tune the D. Now I'll say if the peg were at a different angle, I might not use the the back of the finger as I just did, like this. I might be using the front of the finger, you know, as it, as it turns and the, the, the angle of the, the paddle part of the peg changes, uh, you, you might need to use a different part of the finger. And, and here for the G, you know, I'm going to just simply grab it like that. Instead of doing, instead of doing this, I'm gonna simply do that. I, I, I guess because the, the, the peg is at a better angle for me. And uh, let's do that one.
and see for this one I've got uh, my pinky on this side of the scroll, my ring finger on this side of the scroll, cradling it that way. I just happen to find that that is uh, comfortable for, for my hand at this point. I'm not, I'm not clenching my hand. I'm actually able to very, in a relaxed manner, uh, cradle the, the scroll in my fingers. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Yeah, and the E, you know, this one, you know, to, to get it started with my violin, my pegs don't slip too badly, so I'm not even gonna cradle the violin. But then when I gotta go back up, oh, I gotta squeeze that finger in between these two pegs, get the thumb there, and kind of get my middle finger wrapped around the base side of the peg like this. Ooh, it started slipping. Do you hear that? If I let go right now, oh, watch what happens. Let's see what happens. Did you see how it just continued down? Now it's like, uh-oh. So that's what might happen if you're tuning with your pegs. And in that situation, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and place the violin on my knee, place my hand on the opposite side of the neck, the base side of the neck. I'm gonna push in on that E and turn up. relatively in tune. Let me let me back it off again just so I can kind of complete this tuning. Here we go, I'm getting getting that same position. There we go. Now luckily most of you will have at least an E tuner so you know you can get that that last little bit. Okay, so one more point about the pegs that I almost forgot to mention is uh, if, you're, if your violin is strung right, you to tighten the strings on either side, you will be winding up and away from you to tighten and down towards you to loosen. So on, for, this is the G, this is the D. For these two pegs, if you go counterclockwise you are tightening on the other side you are tightening by going clockwise because as i said you're always rolling it up and away from you to tighten the peg you can't just assume that you know well oh everything here is clockwise it's not clockwise it's up and away depending on you know no matter which side of the violin that you're on all right so i hope that was helpful Please let me know if you have any questions or comments. Uh, feel free to comment below. Uh, and please share this video if you know anyone else who uh, you think this would be helpful for. Hit that like button. All right, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye-bye.